you did not see this one coming, Whoopi Goldberg's faux sympathy for the working class was ripped to shreds when Anna Kasparian, of all people, in the Young Turks, held up a mirror to their face, exposing Whoopi as exactly the kind of shrewd, rich capitalist she demonizes. See if you can watch this segment from The View with a straight face, and I think you'll know exactly why the panel's being clowned online for it. And just quickly want to say, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you so much to my Uncle Chris and Ann Sam for having us out in Florida this year. I am in location over here with my dad at the moment, so it's a different set, but let's jump into it. I appreciate that people are having a hard time. Me too. Yeah. I work for a living. If I had all the money in the world, I would not be here. <laughs> okay? So I'm a working person, you know? And my kid has to feed her family, mm -hmm. you know? And my great-granddaughter has to be fed by her family. I know it's hard out there, but I also know that there are a lot of things that we just said, no, I'm... I'm just gonna go this way. Right. And a lot of that is also what happened. I love what she did, yay. You know, we talk to people all the time yeah. who say this is what's bothering me. But the thing that's bothering everybody should not be the thing that puts 85% of other people in danger. What? That's a word salad rivaled only by Kamala Harris, and it's a sad attempt to try to relate to the middle and working class that has long left the Democratic Party in the rearview mirror for precisely this reason. By the way, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, because we are not afraid to hold up the mirror to these elites. And just for the record, Whoopi Goldberg is easily worth tens of millions of dollars if you combine her Hollywood and TV career over nearly six decades. Just her Los Angeles mansion alone is worth more than $9 million, which is more than most Americans will ever see in their entire life. So no, no one's buying this pathetic plea at trying to placate the working class by appearing relatable, and certainly not someone like Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks who's become disillusioned with the Democrats for exactly this reason. It seemed like the view, like we hadn't been covering the view all that much prior to the election because it got boring. It seemed like uh, they mostly agreed on everything. But it is interesting to see how conflict has increased on that show following the outcome of the election because Sonny Hostin especially does not want to accept that Democrats lost due to the fact that they have abandoned the working class. She's like totally in la la land about it and so is Whoopi Goldberg. But Sonny Hostin's on another level, okay? But anyway, putting that aside, I'm gonna just give you a little more information because I wanna juxtapose the kind of life Whoopi Goldberg lives and what average Americans are struggling with right now. So let's go to graphic four here. After landing her gig on The View, Goldberg relocated back to New York City where she bought a full floor loft in Soho for $4 million. Me too, she knows, right, she knows the working right. class. She sold the two bedroom apartment in 2010 uh, during the economic crash, of course, for uh, just under $3 million, so oh. she lost there. But mm. in a search for more privacy, she moved to the New Jersey suburbs, purchasing a $2.8 million mansion in the gated community. Okay, so that's- In New Jersey, $2.8 million will buy you a castle. What an insult that is to the person working multiple jobs to put food on the table, to then be told by Whoopi Goldberg that she feels your struggle because she also has to work for a living, which every person has to do, Whoopi. And especially not when that work is sitting in a cozy studio, having an ill-informed casual drawing room conversation and getting paid millions for it. And look, I don't get paid millions, but I've had real jobs like being a mover, it's pretty cushy to be on camera, let me tell you what. Now, I think what Whoopi Goldberg tried to do here is reminiscent of what we're seeing broadly in the Democratic Party, living a life coaxed in capitalist luxury after paying lip service to the working class, so it doesn't complain. Here's what Whoopi actually thinks of the modern working class in a clip from last year scoffing at young Americans and telling them it's their fault they are so much poorer at this stage of life than previous generations. Apparently millennials and Gen Z have a much different view of the American dream than past generations. <laughs> Data shows that soaring inflation, student debt, and limited room for advancement in the workplace has made them feel that milestones like affording a home, starting a family, excelling within the corporate structure are out of reach. Does every generation feel this way at some point? I say yes. Every generation comes and wants to do better than their parents did. 
every generation. But I'm sorry, if you only want to work four hours, it's going to be harder for you to get a house. And just to be clear, most Gen Z Americans are working up to 50 hours a week to make ends meet, according to researcher Corey C. Miller. Before I made it as a YouTuber, I was a mover working 70 plus hours every single week. And just to tell you, even in that case, it was very hard to live. They're also in generations where half report living paycheck to paycheck, and most have realized that they may never be able to live the American dream of owning a home one day, given the rapid rise in housing cost and wage situation. And then comes Whoopi Goldberg at nearly 70 years old and clearly out of touch with the financial challenges of the new generation, with a condescending attempt to equalize their struggles to her own. And no, I'm sure she's worked hard in her life and good for her, but we're not going to pretend that acting in movies or hosting a talk show deserves special praise for being a particularly difficult job. You know what a difficult job is? Being in the military. But I digress. Especially not when she tries to conflate having to work a job with being working class, which are not even close to the same thing. She uh, made it seem like she's struggling and that she has on. no choice but to, you know, really pick herself up every day and, and just head over to work and it's like a lot of manual labor. Like the way she carried herself in that segment was ridiculous. She's not a working class American, okay? So uh, Goldberg was able to negotiate a salary for Sister Act 2 back in the habit between an estimated $7 million and $12 million, making Goldberg the highest paid actress in Hollywood at the time. Uh, in 2007, she joined The View as moderator and panelist alongside creator Barbara Walters, Joy Behar, Sherry Shepard, and Elizabeth Hasselbeck. In, 20, in a 2016 report from Variety, Goldberg's one-year contract was estimated to be worth between $5 million and $6 million. Yeah, you work for a living, but you're not a working class American. There's a difference. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it just look, my point is you don't understand what it's like to be a struggling American who's concerned about their financial stability. You know what I find sad? The kind of disconnect to reality that Whoopi is displaying here is just a microcosm of what has resulted in the working class abandoning the Democratic Party at large. And you saw that in this election. Today, less than 2% of state legislatures from the Democrat and Republican parties come from a working class background. Yes, just 2%, which means 98% of the people up top making the rules don't even understand what it's like to worry about how you're going to put food on the table for your children or deal with a financial emergency that puts you into years long debt. And the working class has historically looked towards the Democrats for help because they represent the left wing that has always said they stand for their rights. But the modern Democratic Party and the left wing media establishment is as snobbish and condescending as anyone can be, occasionally throwing them crumbs of their sympathy, especially around an election when they need their votes to gain power. 100%, no, look, we've covered the view a lot, unfortunately. And so uh, so the two things she said are just not remotely true. Uh, which she's, you know, about being a working class American. She said, me too, I guess maybe that's a new me too movement for rich people on TV. Look, oh, working class, me too, me too. Come on, guys, come on, come on. It's just, it insults our intelligence. That channels my frustration so perfectly. The truth is the Democratic Party at large has failed to recognize and adapt to something important. It's that we are not in the 19th century anymore where there was almost a uniform working class that could be categorized as such. The working class of today is much more dynamic and has different needs, and the working class in America today wants more social mobility and a chance to rise up the ranks to some kind of riches. They want to keep more of the money they make and have a genuine shot at building something worthwhile. And that's why you see so many people from the middle and working class flocking to the right-wing populace like Trump, who promises them a more trade protectionist agenda to protect their domestic jobs and lower their taxes. And I think as long as the Democrats don't recognize that this important electorate is slipping through their fingers, they'll keep losing their ground to the other side. Maybe you can look past what Whippy Goldberg said, but overlooking what the working class has been trying to say for years means digging the grave of your own politics in a world where this demographic can decide entire elections. However, let me know in the comments what you think about this, and please share this video with people that you think need to see it. There's no doubt that the results of this election have jolted the political class to the new political realities of a better America.